everyone and welcome to Diamonds of Craft where I make things. My name is Sarah. Finally I'm back after two months of being away and I'm sorry for that but you know life gets in the way and things happen and I take a very long time to do things. I am always really busy um, but here I am, I'm back. I've brought you another video, another doll video and I definitely have one coming in October because it's done. It's finished. I've done it already. It's been edited. I know I said that I would have a doll tour coming and I do have it filmed. It just is a bigger project than I expected it to be. So it will be here just maybe later on in the year. A long time ago, I asked my Instagram followers if they wanted to take part in a giveaway doll when I reached a thousand followers and they all voted on a, a theme which was magical. Later on we had another vote for what kind of magical and Luna Witch won that vote by, it was very close, it was 36 votes to about 10. So that is what we have today, we have a Luna Witch so let's get right into it. Okay, so for this project I am going to use Kiyomi Hauntily because I absolutely love her ghostly blue skin. Her hair is so lovely, I'm kind of aggrieved to chop it all off. Apologies to the doll collectors who really would have wanted to keep this doll intact, but she's mine now. Oh well, the hair must come off. I will keep it though, it is in really amazing condition so I could probably use it somewhere else. Once again, when her hair is well and truly gone, I use the flat sculpting tool to scrape out the rest of the hair. It works well, but the uh, little ridges on the tool did leave my hand with an interesting texture. So if you do try this with this tool, you've been warned. The hair wasn't too gloopy to pull out though, thankfully. Still gross though. Get rid of a factory paint with pure acetone or something that is mostly acetone. Since she doesn't have a lot of makeup, just a ghostly white and blue situation, it was easier to remove than most of the other faces. Not mm, clean. I encountered a little problem here. When pulling her hair out, the hairline did rip open. It's not a huge rip though, so I think I can get away with super gluing it closed again. Now you finally get to see a reroute. My rerouting tool is a lot like everyone else's. It is a hand drill with a needle cut on an angle. I bought some hair from a UK based company that I have used before called My Little Custom. I bought the colours Moonlight, Diamond and Snowflake. So you get a tiny chunk of hair, slide it onto the needle and plunge it back into the holes the other hair came out of. Simple. Takes forever though so make sure you have a few hours free. I want her hair to be sparkly and sort of ethereal like the moon and I tell you when I started the reroute I was like this is so pretty <laughs> it's so sparkly like molten silver honestly it's so gorgeous once all the holes have been replugged it's time for the part this always gets me. Sometimes I do a great job and sometimes I just get lost. <laughs> but all you have to do is overplug. Um, this time I did it on one side mostly and then went back and put more hair in on the other side. I kept the hair separated with a little clip so I wouldn't lose it and it looks like this. Some glue to secure all of those hair plugs from the inside. And that's the hair done with for now. Now the face. I started on the right eye and I hated it. So I do abruptly switch to the left eye. Pay no mind, I'll get round to the other one later. Now, I did say once that no matter the skin color, I start with brown. <sighs> Just made a liar out of myself because I started with blue here. 
Oh well, mm, I mostly do that and I decided to try something new this time. She has these molded on eyelids, eyelashes. I'm, I'm not sure, but they're now the basis for my heavy eyeliner. I plan on giving her some stick on eyelashes, so that works out fine. I wanted to add a lot of drama to the eyes so that they stand out on her face. I added white to the underside of the waterline and I really like the look. Of course, the white is always the hardest colour to saturate on a doll, especially when their skin is a different colour. So I painted the sclera on with some gouache. I don't paint very well, um, especially not on small scale. I think I need a better brush for it and I should take care of it very well. <laughs> but that's okay, it's fixable. Everything is fixable. When I was coming up with the concept ideas, I saw a lot of gradients happening on the fingers and arms. And I thought to myself, well, that's an excellent idea. I did try to do something kind of similar on another doll, but you'll see her in the doll tour. For this one, I wanted to give her an ethereal, spooky, mystical kind of feel. So I used my pastels to give her a night sky kind of forehead. This did stay in her gorgeous silver hair, but I could wash it out so it was no trouble. <laughs> I tried painting on her eyebrows and I very quickly decided that was a bad idea. Her eyes need some huge catch lights, which is something that I like the look of when it's directly in the middle of the pupil. There's something a little otherworldly about it, but maybe I'm just biased. And then I painted on some not-so-random stars. I think the pink blush really, really made this face up look a thousand times better. It just breaks up the huge amount of blue that this doll is. Now for some lower lashes. That is her face all done, mostly. just have to do the same with the body so that it doesn't look out of place because her clothes are pretty skimpy. So for this I did spray her a couple of times with MSC and to build the colour I just need to spray her again and again. I am making her hands, feet and the tops of her thighs darker. Adding the pink blush and some blue mica powder to really make it shine. I did do this with the face, but I didn't film that for some reason. I painted the moon phase motifs on her body, though I think this was try five at this point. Moving swiftly forward to the clothes, all of the witchy type clothes that I saw when I scrolled through Pinterest either went the way of flowy gown with huge sleeves or some bodycon type thing. There seemed to be no in between. She's going to be getting a starry leotard, which I had printed the pattern on this fabric. And to be honest, I should have got it printed on some silkier fabric, but never mind. 
I made the pattern from an existing Monster High swimming costume so that I could get the proportions right and I did try it a few times just to check. And I got to use my teeny tiny iron for the first time, yay! <laughs> This fabric is thick, but it means that I can glue the hems where I need to, which is a godsend. I tried it on my model doll to make sure the fit is right backwards at first to pin it, and then once it's been sewn together, and held it against the fabric I want her skirt and jacket to be, just to make sure that it looks all right. I chose chains for the straps, uh, it just felt right, and I am a little extra, so I glued these jump rings into the top of the leotard, and I actually went back in time and fitted the halter to the actual blue doll. Sadly, I cannot share those secrets of time travel with you. I really wanted this leotard to be awesome, so I glued a load of rhinestones onto it. I didn't actually film the process of making the skirt because I wanted to have a go and then make it again, but the first one was decent so I just don't have that footage. It's okay, I made a jacket too and that didn't really work out how I wanted it, so I did do that again. I didn't want a full jacket, just like a cape with sleeves. Uh, I don't know if that has a name, but my experiment was semi-successful, so I just needed to make some adjustments. I cut the pattern out based on the first pattern I had, which is generally always an existing pattern, but with some adjustments. I actually used my sewing machine to gather the ruffled part and sew it to the bodice, so baby steps. Time for shoes! I have some lovely friends who have a 3D printer and kindly printed out the shoe bases from Moonlight Jewel. I painted the bases this sparkly black, which to be fair I thought was normal black, but I was pleasantly surprised. I cut some soles out of thin cardboard so that I could easily attach the straps to the underside. And for a closure, I glued two jump rings to the end of a ribbon. Okay, to close this closure, you have to pass the other end of the ribbon through both of the loops and then back through just one of the loops, if that makes sense. I saw that on Instagram and it is a revelation. Then I just glued the sole to the base and that was it. They show off her feet quite nicely, so I am happy. Her hair hat, of course, I had to try it before I actually committed to making it. Um, but once I had the pattern, I traced around it on the felt that I was going to use with chalk. I cut the same pieces out of the fabric I used for the skirt and jacket and glued it to the hat pieces before I stitched them together. For her staff, I knew I needed to make it out of polymer clay. And after putting on the clay, it was at this moment that I had a bright idea. 
I wanted this staff to be kind of Magical Girl-esque, but not fully there. And when I put the clay on, I thought, hey, this kind of looks like a little figure. And I decided to turn it into a moon person. Well, a moon woman, because who doesn't like the female figure? And you lucky viewers get to watch me sculpt some boobs again, so winner. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. I did paint it with white acrylics first, but I don't think that was really necessary as I covered it with the same sparkly black I painted the shoes with and the coverage was just awesome, so never mind. It's a perfect example of those happy little accidents that Bob Ross keeps talking about. The moon head was just a pearl bead that I painted and I didn't film it but I added some strips of fabric to the arms of the staff to finish it off. My good friend Matt offered to make the base for this doll. He is amazing at landscapes and he is making her a grassy stone circle to stand in. Apologies for the change in quality, we're doing our best. But Matt is using Sterling Battle Mire by Citadel for the mud base and multi-purpose PVA glue and green stuff terrain for the grass. And to style her hair, I gave her a fancy Daenerys Targaryen style braid. I curled the rest with my metal straw and hair straighteners. I knew it was going to be an ordeal, so I'm just demonstrating what I did for the rest of it here. Once that was done, I cut the ends off to neaten it up. I am sure her dresses everywhere are collectively screaming at me for cutting hair this way. But the curls cover most of my sins and I did cut back into them to feather them out. I do like the little rings that I've been seeing ladies wear these days. And I'm pretty sure I was watching Enchantarium videos when I was doing her hair and they did this too. So of course I had to include it. I also used the trick to tie the hair together with wire instead of elastic bands. Finally, I added the eyelashes with great difficulty. Uh, they were a pain. I don't know how Papa Natalia does it every time because they kept falling down, but I managed it in the end. I gloss the eyes and the lips and I am all done. Now, I usually don't talk over the picture montage, but I just have to give a huge shout out to Will, who took the most amazing shots of this girl. I can't thank you enough. I would never have these awesome pictures without the help of you and Steph. So, big love.
This is Claire Deloon. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making her. And if you want a chance of winning her, head over to my Instagram where I have all the rules and instructions on how to enter this giveaway. It's open until the 30th of September, so get in there quickly. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, ring the bell. Ring that bell. Ring my bell. Don't be a dick in the comments, as usual. Keep it nice. Keep everything happy. If it's not nice and it's not happy, Bob Ross will be really upset. Just saying. Thank you for watching this video once again, and I'll see you later. Bye. No one wants to upset Bob Ross. No one wants to upset Bob Ross. It's like kicking Bambi.